Uh, yes, I'm Chris Reed from Nissan. Uh, we're headquarters in Farmington Hills, Michigan, and uh, it's actually our 30th anniversary, hard to believe. So I was being interviewed and somebody asked me uh, about it and I said I was actually one of the first employees there and they're like, you've been there for 30 years? So yeah, um, I have. But uh, my background uh, was uh, I'm platform and technology engineering now, so it kind of evolved. It used to be kind of the unglamorous part of the car, the part that the customer doesn't always see, you know, the powertrain, electrical chassis, uh, ITS parts, and uh, the upper body seemed to be a lot more fun, you know, styling related and all that. But recently, with all of our technologies and even our mission here um, for our kind of Nissan vision, um, it's actually become quite exciting. So between electrification, between autonomous drive, and connectivity, it's actually all in that area. So it's pretty fun. Um, in addition to uh, that, I'm actually a chief vehicle engineer, and I was in charge of the Leaf and other cars like the Murano. So I'm going to spend a lot of time talking about the Leaf today and how it relates to our overall strategy. Uh, first of all, corporate vision of Nissan. Um, you know, in the 30 years of working for Nissan and the combination with Renault and others. We've had a lot of business plans, and they usually end up being a lot to do with market share and you know profit and that kind of stuff, which is fun. But there's not a good vision there, and we actually have a great vision finally, and I love it because uh, when you work on a car, you got to create a vision for the customer, the ideal customer. So every engineering decision, every person decision, everybody works towards the same thing, and now we've got that as our corporate vision as a company. And it's pretty straightforward. I think a lot of people have similar ones, but we've got zero emission, zero fatality. Um, and that is what we're, we're shooting for. And so, of course, the LEAF fits really well into that. Within our vision, we've got three pillars. We've got Nissan Intelligent Mobility is actually the name of the vision. And it's uh, we have intelligent drive, power, and integration. So drive is kind of how you're, you're confident when you're driving the vehicle. Um, things like autonomous drive and other things that's kind of safety related, but basically things that give you confidence are in that pillar. And of course, the LEAF, we've come out with our first step into autonomous drive, and that's this, call, we call it ProPilot Assist. That's in that category. Um, the next is uh, power, uh, intelligent power. And of course, that really is working towards the zero emission. So of course, the LEAF fits really well into that category. And the last is intelligent in integration. So that's really the connected side. Not gonna touch on that a lot, but the, the LEAF has got all the, the connected car uh, features on your phone, working through, of course, you know, Android Auto, CarPlay, other things like that. So that's kind of like how we kind of frame everything that we do, every decision that we make comes back to where does it fit into this vision and what steps we're taking. So that's the future. So quickly, where have we come from? Um, you know, we, we consider ourselves a leader. I think we're kind of a wallflower leader of EV, honestly. Um, we have a lot of history, but history, I think it's kind of a little bit easier because it's not mass market. But this is what we've done, right? So we started in 1947 with this car called the Tama. This is the upper left hand of the chart here. And uh, we kind of step by step work through the evolution of our EV kind of development. We know obviously the market, as we all know, is like 70% you know, uh, trucks these days. And we're, we're not giving up on sedans at all, but we recognize that if you want to be a player in EV or in the market, you've got to have uh, you know, crossovers as well as cars. And then we see basically having a 1 million, uh, being able to sell with Nissan, 1 million electrified vehicles, so a combination of EV plus other things like we, we call e-powered, things like that. So finally, um, Alliance, right? So you hear a lot about it, actually even internally, you know, we're at Nissan, so Renault doesn't have so many cars in the U.S. market, so people always ask, well, what, what is this Alliance and how does it work? Um, it's really, really coming together, and it's not just about talk, um, it's kind of, it's like the back office, but back office now includes the engineering side, the purchasing side, the whole organization is really kind of kind of coming together. And so now we have Mitsubishi in the mix as well. So this, this 2022 plan is, is a common plan and um, it basically, is, is, as I said, it focuses a lot on our EVs. So there's actually 12 new EVs as a total um, alliance coming out, eight of them on Nissan's side. They'll have 70% commonality between all the platforms and between the companies. So it's really a focus on keeping the external view of the customer uh, to be unique, you know, the unique message or unique product that comes from Renault, Mitsubishi, and Nissan, but the backside, the, you know, the technology of EVs and others are going to be common, and, uh, you know, that's going to see a lot of momentum moving forward. I think 10 plus million cars, you know, is the backbone of that. Where is it going? What is that next step for us? And maybe even a time or a place, or before the time and a place. Well, I think um, 
I think there's, you know, you can hear out there the buzz of the future of EV. I think Andy mentioned as well the solid state battery and, and those, and you know, we're deeply researching that as well. And I think, um, like Scott said, the, the function of trying to put more power faster into a battery is obviously key, right? As you get the range, you know, extending here, um, obviously that's going to be one of the hurdles we have to get end up. So, you know, I think we've got a lot of kind of irons in the fire, but I mean, I think solid state is probably the, the main one, but it's going to be overcoming this, you know, the right range balance and cost, right? So if you could get to, you know, in-road charging and those kind of things, yeah, maybe it would change the amount of the ratio of how much you had to have on board. But uh, I think for the for the next step into the, into the future of EVs, um, it's going to be, you know, refining the batteries, you know, getting the cost down, but Cost down or is coming naturally as, as we evolve and as the, the volume increase, but but with this range issue, increasing range at the same time, it's going to kind of offset. So I, I think finally, though, next generation solid state and then beyond is what's going to happen next.